Hello, this is Steve, N4LQ. We've come up with a new improved version of the NFED half-wave antenna transformer. What is improved is the power rating. Before, we were only able to run about 6 to 800 watts on 80 meters. But with the addition of this fan and some vents, we can run full legal limit on 80 meter CW or digital for an indefinite period of time. This little fan is a special fan. It's designed to operate underwater for half an hour and it's dustproof so it should last for a long long time outside. So we didn't really take any effort to protect it. Uh, as you can see here we've got standoff pieces of nylon that uh, hold the uh, transformer away from the fence and that allows air to enter the back and get pulled through the transformer and blowing out the front. Let's take a look at the inside of the box and how it was built. First we obtained some vents that came from Amazon, I believe, but um, I'm going to give you the um, part numbers for these. These are one inch vents that were designed for siding to allow moist air to escape from behind your house siding. Uh, I, I drilled these holes with a one inch spade bit and they just snap in and you can, if you want, put some glue on them to hold them. Here is the uh, antenna connection for the output of the transformer. This is a 1024 hex bolt. I found the hex bolts handy because you can put a wrench on them and really get them tight. I was not able to get a, a Phillips screwdriver in there, so this worked out great. Here's the hole that's been drilled for our uh, SO239 connector. The transformer that I'm going to use came from Field Day, and we had it hanging from a uh, from a lamp post I believe with a piece of rope before there was there was any box <laughs> we just used it for temporarily and uh, took it and mounted it in the box the SO239 connector was already soldered on uh, the two ground leads here we just stuck it through the holes on the SO239 and soldered them really well and then ground them off smooth on the other side and uh, we're using a couple of bolts here to hold the uh, connector in. This is the rear of the box. I believe this is a 4x4 four four inch box that we obtained from Lowe's in the electrical department. It's made by Carlin and um, they are uh, about 2 inches thick I believe just right for uh, 3 toroid cores. Uh, there is uh, the pattern again. The, uh, the core will be centered on this and then these two will allow air to circulate around the outside of the uh, toroid. This box is handy because it has mounting ears. You can either mount it to a post, a fence, or you can put a rope through it and hang it from a tree. This is the fan that I installed on the front the front panel, the front cover. I used a couple of bolts here and I put them in backwards so that we don't have to worry about the bolt coming in contact with the uh, with the core. And here we are. This is the uh, just about completed uh, transformer. These fans um, come with a three wire cable that went to a connector it looked like it was made for a computer although I don't think I would use this fan in a computer unless it was maybe a, a server or something it's just way too powerful uh, you can just cut that and uh, plug off and, and strip the wires and figure out which ones positive and negative experimentally I've tried it every which way and you can't hurt it and so there it is all done and my main concern was uh, noise from the fan being generated in its electronics coupling into the to the core since they are practically touching 
And I put this on here, uh, this ferrite, to try to help. But uh, later on, found out there was just no need for it. The fan didn't seem to generate any noise at all. And this is how I made my connection to the um, to the fan. And that's some DC cable I had handy. You can use any kind of cable you want. doesn't make any difference. The power uh, is so small, it's only about 100 milliamps of current needed. So... You can use phone wire, Ethernet cable, whatever. And there's another view of that uh, little noise filter, which I didn't need. And this is how I had it set up for a test. So in this position, this is where I ran uh, one and a half kilowatt into it on 80 meters for quite some time, a little over half an hour. CW, a key down, and everything else. And the air coming out of here was about uh, 112, 114 degrees, something like that. And uh, you could tell it was warm, but the air temperature outside was pretty high also. It was about 85, 90 degrees outside. So I don't think there's a thing to worry about. This thing is never going to overheat with that fan there. And you can use a wall board or your rig's power supply or whatever to, to get your voltage to run the fan um, this is um, next, almost the final installation. There, there's a strain relief I used. This is where I had taken off the noise filter after I found out I didn't need it. Uh, this is my antenna. This is a 134 feet, I believe. Um, I've got an insulator up here, and the wire just passes through it. And the rope uh, goes down the tree and pulls it up. I shot that up there with a slingshot, a fishing line. It's about uh, that's about a eighty some foot tree. Um, the transformer is down here on the left, and this goes to a tree. That's a rope. So uh, we used a a ground clamp to make our ground connection. You can get these at Lowe's. Um, Dollar sixty-eight, I believe, galvanized, and um, there's the uh, fan. Cooler guys, go to coolerguys.com. Twelve dollars and ninety-five cents. This fan can operate under three feet of water for thirty minutes. It's dustproof, and um, it is quite powerful. Eleven thousand RPM, twelve CFM. Uh, remote power through your coax would be possible if you were running lower power. Uh, MFJ sells a, a power injector, they call it a bias T, it's about 40 bucks for each end and you um, you run your 12 volts through the coax. That's kind of an expensive way to go about doing it. It looks nice but uh, it's only rated for 200 watts I believe and we're going to be running a lot more power than that. This guy, Phil, uh, 85X, wrote an article, uh, Remote Power Through Your Coax, and I, I think his is rated for 100 watts. So personally, I wouldn't bother with this. I'd just run some wire out to the transformer. This is the old um, schematic that we uh, whipped up several years ago, and it's been revised a few times, and it's got part numbers for the uh, cores and for the wire, the uh, it's got the information for the capacitor. It tells you how long your wire needs to be so you can get the right number of turns on it and so forth. We're also putting a link down below here to show you uh, where to go for more information. So this is the vents. Um, these are available online. This is the brand name right here. If you just Google this, you'll find some good deals out there. I believe this is Amazon free shipping and uh, they're pretty cheap nice little vents spade bit that I used to drill the one inch hole with and there's the hole saw that I used to drill the hole for the fan uh, you can probably find one like this somewhere else uh, it's not the easiest thing to use but it is adjustable you can get it just right uh, I suggest laying the box uh, on a piece of wood and then using this to drill through the box and into the wood. 
So there's the complete uh, completed transformer. There's my ground wire. I've got a ground rod right down below here. There's my uh, RG213 coax, my power wire. There's that uh, ground clamp that we got at Lowe's. It clamps right on the PL259, good and tight. So there's no need to worry about having a separate ground lug when you can do this. Um, and so there we go. Fully tested, um, high power, in-fed half-wave transformer, 80 through 10 meters. And that's all, so thank you for watching.